welcome back to this later half of today's uh, lecture. Uh, as I said in the earlier half that we will prove uh, Hilbert rules and that's uh, today and I just want to remind you that L algebraically close is very, very important. So, without that uh, this null Schoenzaz is not true. So, uh, for algebraic geometry it is very important to consider L is algebraically close and then later on we can specialize L equal to K and K is algebraically close and then you will get a classical setup. So, today now I want to prove Hilbert's Null, Stellen, Zatz. It is very easy to pronounce this if you know where to break, and at least uh, Indians have some experience. Those who have learned Sanskrit to uh, to give where the breaking should be. So the breaking should be Null and Stellen. So, that becomes uh, z 0 place theorem. So, theorem which tells you about which places it is 0. So, all right. So, let us go back. So, I want to little bit uh, write this null stellen that is. So, that is where one breaks. All right. So, uh, the uh, L over K field extension and L is algebraically close. These are our assumptions. So, this, this is what we will assume today and typical case for example, so of course, C over R is there, but also the case C over Q is also included or Q bar over Q. These cases are uh, interesting classically at least. All right, so and I take a arbitrary ideal A, A any ideal I R where R we are abbreviating for the polynomial ring or a field K in n indeterminates. So, this is what we have ideal and first so we have using this we have defined V L of ideal A and this was a subset of L power n and this we called it K algebraic set. Right. So, the first question is when is there is at least one solution? See it is like when we study linear algebra and when we have given a system of linear equations your first question is how do we decide that this system is consistent? Those days in the linear algebra the term consistent is used to say that when do they have common solution. So, the question is when does it have what condition do you want to put on the ideal A so that this algebraic set is definitely non-empty. So, that means the polynomials which define this ideal. So, if A is defined by the polynomial f 1 to f m that means A is generated by these polynomials. Now, the question we are asking is when do these finitely many polynomials f 1 to f m in n indeterminates over the field k when, does, when do they have the common solution and that is precisely what I will call it h n s h n s 1 h n s 1 says that. So, L algebraically close, I just want to remind you that we are assuming L algebraically close. If the ideal A, obviously, if the ideal A is not a proper ideal, if one belongs to that, then there is no hope 
that V L of the one the constant polynomial 1 will have no 0. So, there, there is no hope. So, if V uh, if ideal A is a proper ideal is not the whole ring R then V L of A is definitely non empty. That means, the system of polynomials is consistent that means, they have a common 0 at least 1. How many that is more difficult question and we will not address immediately now, but sometime we will also talk about it. So, this is the Hilbert null, null standards 1. So, this is also called a classical classical Hilbert null standards. So, I will I will just say orally this is HNS 1, it is also called classical null standards. HNS 2 HNS2 is again remember L is algebraically close, then V not V, uh, I, I, K of V, L of ideal A equal to the root of the radical ideal of A this is true for every ideal A in the ring R. And sometimes some books will also call this as a geometric formulation. The, it is called geometric formulation because it gives a bridge between algebra and geometry as we saw this equality uh, make uh, happens when both the maps are the map is bijective ok. So, therefore, it is called um, a geometric formulation, but this is if you like this is called a classical formulation and the third one HNS 3 this is also called algebraic formulation or also it is in the literature also it is called Zariski's lemma. Because Zariski has proved it also proved this. So, what is it? So, as you can guess it by the name algebraic formulation um, that it will not involve um, uh, geometry at all. In fact, it will not involve this language of uh, algebraic sets. So, I will state in the simple terms that uh, so uh, let uh, k over k capital K over small k be a field extension um, if the bigger field k k is algebra k algebra k is a, if capital K is a k algebra of finite type then that extension capital K over k is algebraic extension. So, now I will have to recall you these terms and obviously, this term you already know it, but I will recall it. So, we have these three statements HNS 1, HNS 2, HNS 3 and as you can see that this HNS 3 have nothing to do with algebraic sets and V and I and so on and HNS 1 is uh, does not involve the ideal I k, but HNS 2 involves. So, it appears that it appears that HNS 2 looks stronger but I am going to prove that these statements are equivalent. So, uh, 
and I will recall this concept. So, finite type is what? Finite type means this capital K is a quotient residue class algebra K algebra of a polynomial ring in finitely many variables over the small k. That is a finite type. That means, as an algebra it is generated by finitely many elements. So, in the notation this means capital K equal to K and generated by this notation I hope you have not forgotten this notation as an algebra it is generated by finitely many elements x 1 to x n in capital K. But this is precisely the quotient of the polynomial ring in n variables modulo some ideal modulo some ideal. So, that is a finite type algebra over a field. Actually, we have also studied finite type algebras over arbitrary commutative ring. That means, they are residue class rings of a polynomial algebra over the base ring A modulo some ideal. And algebraic extension means every element of capital K satisfies some non-zero polynomial over small k. So, this again I will recall when we start proving. So, what are we going to prove? So, let us write down. So, we shall prove that I want to prove they are equivalent. So, I will prove that H n s 1 is equivalent to H n s 2 and H n s 2 is equivalent to H n s 3. So, this prove the equivalences. So, we will we shall prove that this if and only if this if and only if and obviously then I if I have to prove that they are all true then I have to prove one of them at least and I will then choose the which one is the easiest to prove and namely H n s 3 and H n s 3. So, these three things we are going to prove one is this, two is this and three is this and that will prove that all these are equivalent and they are true in particular H n s is true. H n s 2 is true and that is a geometric formulation and that is very useful for setting up modern algebraic geometry. All right, So, let us prove very easily. So, I am going to first concentrate on this one. So, uh, first we will prove that uh, H n s 1 implies H n s 2. So, what is given to us? It is given to us L over K field extension and L is algebraically close. And we have also given ideal A in the polynomial ring R, where R is K x 1 to x n this is given to us. And what is want to prove? We want to prove, so I will write down here to prove i k i k of v l of the ideal a equal to the radical ideal of a. This is what we want to prove. And one implication is easy and that was this. This we have already is even because if a polynomial is here, the power is in the ideal A, that power will vanish and every point here and therefore, by definition that power will belong to this ideal i k and because i k is a radical ideal that polynomial itself will belong to the i k. So, this, in, this inclusion was easy. So, the more difficult one is this. I will uh, remind you this is what the what we are looking for the proof. 
all right and what are we allowed to use we are allowed to use hns1 that means whenever i have an algebraically closed field whenever ideal a is there which is not a unit ideal then vl of that a is non empty this is what we are allowed to use so we have if you want to apply that we will have to create a situation like that so let us start the proof so i will start um, a polynomial on this side this is ideal in r so i will take a polynomial here and i will prove that polynomial is here so let f be a polynomial in i k of v l and as i said this a is generated by finitely many polynomial that we know from hilbert's basis theorem so v l of f1 to f fm where if you like ideal a is generated by f1 to fm finitely many polynomials in where f1 to fm r polynomials in r which is a polynomial over k in x1 to xn variables so that is the situation and what do you want to prove we want to prove that this polynomial f belongs to this so i will write on this corner our aim is goal f should belong to the radical ideal of a this is our goal all right so now somehow i have to create a situation so that i can use hns1 right now there is no situation all right so consider w w is v l of f1 to fm comma g where g is 1 minus xn plus 1 times f this is now remember i introduce one extra variable here and this is this is i use this polynomial and this is now algebraic set not in ln but this is in ln plus 1 um and then i want to check that uh, this um this set w is empty or non empty so right now it is vl of this set so suppose there is a point suppose it has a, a point in l power n that means suppose it has a comma an plus 1 belonging to ln plus 1 and suppose this point belongs to w then what happens remember this a is in an so a is in l power n and an plus 1 is in l an plus 1 is in l if it is in w then all these polynomials should vanish there then all these f of f should vanish there so fj of a is 0 for j equal to 1 to m and also the ga g a a n plus 1 now see when i plug this into f f j s there is no x n there x n plus 1 present there so therefore it will only be f j at i f j at a and this is also zero this we know by 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 the definition of this w right so because it's real 
but what do, what does one mean by uh, this g is uh, zero that means when i plug it in here a and an plus 1 so this this will this this polynomial f is already zero there so therefore this condition is equivalent to saying so this is already zero so that means this is this is not zero but this is one sorry this is not zero this should be one because when i plug this there in g this this is already zero at a because f is a polynomial in this and this polynomial should vanish on everybody here but this a is already so this means a is already in vl of this therefore this is one so if this if such a point belong to w then already w a g of a at a, n plus 1 is zero but this is already a contradiction because on the other hand g should vanish there on the other hand g of a n plus 1 should be zero this is a contradiction so this is a, contra a contradiction this is because so this is because f of a is 0 because f belong to this. So, therefore, it, it, it there is in this case uh, w has to be empty. So, if w is non empty it will have some point and we are getting a contradiction. So, this shows that this set w is empty. And then what is our HNS says? If this ideal were non if this ideal were not a unit ideal then w has to be non empty. And hence by HNS 1 the ideal generated by these polynomials f1 fm comma g this should be the whole ideal r which is the polynomial ring in n variable over k then what happens Remember our goal is to prove this that f belongs to the root that is our goal. Alright, this ideal is unit ideal means one should belong to the linear combination of these polynomials with coefficients in the ring R. So, that means, so therefore, Therefore, 1 belongs to the ideal generated by f12 fm comma g, but remember g is 1 minus xn plus 1 times f. So, that is I can write 1 as some polynomials h i s times your uh, variables x 1 to x n plus 1 times f i s plus some polynomial h times the g that is 1 minus x n plus 1. So, here also to be specific I will write h is x 1 to x n plus 1 times g which is 1 minus x n plus 1 f because we are working in the ring k x 1 to 
x n comma x n plus 1. So, the coefficient should be from this ring. So, let me just check what did I write up alright. So, this is not correct this is r I should write here r x n plus 1 which is k x 1 x n comma x n plus 1. You see because uh, w is empty and w is in not in l n, but l power n plus 1 therefore, we have to take one more variable alright. So, we have this equation remember both these sides are uh, this is a constant polynomial 1 and this is the, the other side is the polynomials in the ring polynomial k x 1 to x n plus 1 variables. So, in this polynomial identity I can substitute so, substitute the variable x n plus 1 equal to 1 over f. We have seen that in the polynomial you can substitute any element in the k algebra any k algebra and the k algebra I will take is the quotient field. So, there 1 1 by f will be there. So, the therefore, I am allowed to substitute and then what happens? The substitution is a ring homomorphism. So, I can rearrange the terms uh, addition, multiplication, etcetera. So, um, therefore, this side will not change. So, to get what do we get? These LHS will not change which will be 1 only. This side this will become 1 over f. So, summation this is from i equal to 1 to m i is from 1 to m h i uh, x 1 to x n nothing as they are and this is 1 over f and then f i as it is because there is no x n plus 1 there and h of x n to x n and 1 over f this but this when I put uh, x n plus 1 equal to 1 over f this is 1 minus f over f and this is 0 then. Therefore, this term all together will be 0 that is not contributing and this term has 1 over f in the denominator and because this is a polynomial this was a polynomial x n will not have arbitrary large degree term. So, I can take the common denominator and write this this as. So, this 1 equal to then I want to clear the denominator. So, this will be equal to i equal to 1 to m and instead of h i there will be some other polynomials uh, g i's x 1 to x n and divided by some power of f some power of f and I will take by uh, by supplying up and down common denominator. So, it will be uh, f power some power f s and these polynomials f i as it is for some s a natural number. So, then what do we get from here? Now, you cross multiply you clear this denominator. So, we will get f power s. So, this will become f power s will be equal to i summation i equal to 1 to m the g i's x 1 to x n f i, but these are now where these are in the polynomials in n variable with coefficients in k which was our ring r. So, this is a r linear combination of this polynomial this which is which belongs to the ideal generated by f 1 to f m, but this ideal was precisely the ideal a. So, we have proved that some power of s some power of f belongs to the ideal a. So, that means, the polynomial f itself belongs to the ideal uh, root ideal a.
So, and remember I will show you what we uh, what our goal was. Our goal was to prove f belongs to the radical ideal of A and that is what we have succeeded. So, this this proves H n s 1 implies H n s 2. This is what we were trying to prove and the place where we have used H n s 1 I will show you this is the place where we have used H n s 1 that is because w is empty then this ideal has to be the whole unit ideal. Alright, so now the converse that is H n s 2 implies H n s 1. So, conversely to prove H n s 2 implies H n s 1. So, we want to prove H n s 1 by uh, using H n s 2. So, as usual what is the assumption we should always write L over K field extension and we are assuming L algebraically close and we want to prove if you have an ideal A in the ring R and if this ideal A is a proper ideal then to prove what do you want to prove? We want to prove that um, V of the ideal A V L of the ideal A is non empty. This is what we want to prove. And our assumption is this and L algebraically close of course. And we are allowed to use H n S 2. Alright, so suppose contrary, suppose on the contrary that V L of this ideal A is empty. Then we should get a contradiction. Well, if V L of the ideal I is empty, then what will be the I k? I k of V L of A, this will be equal to I k of empty set. But I k of empty set is what? I k of empty set is the whole ring R because that is I k of 0. This was the first property I listed. This is the ring R which is a polynomial ring in n variables. But what do H n S 2 says in this situation? But by H n S 2 we have radical of the ideal A equal to I k of V L of A for any ideal that was H n S 2, but this is R. So, therefore, I proved that the root radical ideal of A is R then it is very easy to see that A is also the unit ideal R because 1 belongs here that means 1 power 1, 1 power any uh, integer n that is also 1 and that will also belong to the ideal A then. So, this is uh, this is correct. So, which is a contradiction? Contradiction to our assumption A is not R. So, this proves this completes the proof of H n S 1 if and only if H n S 2. Now, we, we will have to prove that the next we want to prove that H n S 1 and H n S 3 are equivalent. So, let us finish that proof also. 
now hns1 so now to prove hns1 implies hns3 so what is the assumption again now i want to prove hns1 uh, I, I i am assuming hns1 that means whenever l is algebraically closed field extension of the field k and there is an ideal which is not unit ideal then v of that is non empty that is the assumption and what is um, hns3 hns3 has nothing to do with algebraically closed and l and k and i and v so let so what is to prove so uh, to prove that to prove what to prove that i will write the statement what we want to prove whenever capital k or small k is a field extension a capital k is a k algebra of finite type then then we want to prove then to prove that k is algebraic over k this is what we want to prove all right so let us start proving it so i have given k which is k algebra of finite type so therefore we have we have given capital k equal to k generated by finitely many elements as k algebras but this means this is a quotient of a polynomial algebra in n variables modulo some ideal and that ideal because this is a field that ideal has to be the maximal ideal with m belonging to spm of capital k x1 to xn because this is a field if it is an ideal so that the the residue class algebra is a field then this ideal must be a maximal ideal that is the characterization of maximal ideal so that is the field uh, that is the maximal ideal now consider ultimately we want to use hns1 that means we have to have algebraically closed field and then so consider l equal to k bar small k bar this is the algebraic closure closure of the small k what is algebraic closure algebraic closure by definition is a smallest algebraically closed field which contains k that means this k bar is algebraic over k this extension is algebraic and if there is any other algebraic extension so and then k bar has no algebraic extension so this is one and k bar has no proper algebraic extension or in other words so let me write in other words it's this is an algebraic extension and k bar is algebraically close it is a theorem of steinitz that every field has an algebraic closure in particular this given k small k has an algebraic closure if you have not seen this theorem i will recommend you to have a look at uh, the course i gave in the last last year on galois theory 
So, all these things are proved there uh, very precisely and very neatly. This is NPTEL course. 19, uh, 19, uh, no, 2018 Jan. All right. So, we assume that every field has algebraic closure. So, and L equal to that we take and then now this M is a maximal ideal. So, M is a maximal ideal in the polynomial ring in N variables and therefore, it is a proper ideal and so, m is therefore, not equal to the whole this n n and this is a small k. Oh, I, I also want to correct here, this is also small k, it is not capital K, this is also small k and this is also small k. So, this is not um, proper ideal therefore, it is uh, polynomial not the whole ring. So, it is a proper ideal therefore, if I take V L of this V L of this ideal M, M is also maximal. So, prime therefore, M is actually a radical ideal. So, M is a radical ideal anyway that is not needed here. So, this is my ring R now and I am applying H n S 1 to, to this uh, algebraic set. So, H n S 1 to the pair L equal to k bar over k. This is what I am applying H n S 1. So, by H n S 1 applied to this and this. So, this is non empty by this is by H n S 1. Therefore, there is a point here. So, that means, I can find A A 1 to A n in L power n and let us abbreviate it A and uh, which belongs to A belongs to V L of m because it is non empty. So, there is a point there, um, but now I look at the k algebra of So, that means, this A will vanish at every polynomial in M. So, that is f of A is 0 for every f in the maximal ideal M. But this means, I have a, a map. So, this means, look at the k algebra homomorphism. So, that I have to define to define it on the polynomial ring x 1 to x n, I just have to give where the variables go and the k algebra here is the k bar which is L. So, here I take the substitution map by x i going to a i. This is the substitution map. If I call this as f, f suffix a, this is a substitution map. Uh, that means, that means what? This proves that, so this ex, there exists a k algebra homomorphism. So, that implies there exists k algebra homomorphism which maps x i to a i and therefore, a, a polynomial uh, each. So, I want to assert from here so, what is the kernel? Kernel is A by uh, all the uh, kernel of this A is precisely this M because of this. So, let me write on the next page. So, this k, so the kernel of this k algebra homomorphism f suffix A is precisely the maximal ideal m, but then it will induce a ring homomorphism k algebra homomorphism from this modulo m inside 
k bar, but this ring is precisely this co this uh, residue class ring is precisely our given field capital K. So, that means there is a k, al k algebra small k algebra homomorphism from k to k bar, but this is injective that means capital K as a field is sitting inside k bar. So, that implies capital K is algebraic over K. So, this so this proves H n S 3. Now, the converse uh, in the next lecture we will prove the converse and also we will prove H n S 3. So, that will complete the proof of the Hilbert uh, these three formulations of uh, Hilbert Null standards and in exercises I will give you many more versions H n S 4, H n S 5, H n S 6. Uh, some of them I will do it in uh, lectures and some I will uh, put it in uh, assignments. So, with this I thank you very much and we will continue in the next lecture.